everybody. Uh, hello, colleagues who have joined us recently, and thank you all who have been staying with us from the previous talks. I hope you have found out something useful for you. And we are continue, con continuing with our Be Excellence conference that is held by Global BA community. So if you want to be involved in a great network of professionals, join us via social media, and we will be happy to see you inside our team members. So we remind you that all conference talks are recorded and the recording will be shared uh, in a week after the session, after the conference. So during the next talk, uh, you can leave your questions as always. And uh, at the end of the presentation, our speaker, speaker will answer them. And uh, please welcome our next speaker. It is Alona Tishko with the topic BA and DEVs, One Mutual Goal. So a small introduction of Alona. Alona is a senior business analyst certified in SAP Commerce Cloud and as a professional product owner. She has plenty of experience working with different international development teams, covering all roles and levels inside the team. Apart from that, Alona is a good in arranging various events and groups of people in achieving the same goal. Also, Alona has a beloved cat that recently gave birth birth to several kittens. So, hi, Alona, how are you? How is your day going so far? Sorry, I am afraid you're muted. Can you try again, please? <laughs> Yeah, Alona, can you please find the mute, unmute button at the bottom of your screen? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, a little bit of a technical issues, so bear with us. So while Alona is uh, trying to unmute herself, um, I'll post the links to our social media in the chat and please uh, feel free to join us, to join our great community and uh, participate in uh, its life. I hope you can hear me now, can't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Now, <laughs> that's great. So how so are you? <laughs> want to do with the, the, the tools that we have to deal with. But again, thank you so much for the introduction. That was, that was great. That was really important. Yeah, and I can uh, see that you can see my screen, not all of us, but at least, uh, oh, yeah. That, that's right, that's okay. Uh, yeah, so hello everyone, uh, once again, nice to s almost see you. Yeah, I can see only the facilitator, uh, but thanks a lot Valeria for the great introduction. I think the, the most important of that was regarding my cat, of course, uh, as for the, uh, uh, every online meetings. But let us probably kick off with our topic today. Uh, yeah, I'm Alona. So just to remind you uh, my name. Uh, but today, uh, let us kick off with the uh, topic that is interesting for, I guess, each BA. Each and every BA, uh, even if you're a very experienced one or you're just a junior. Um, and let's just have wonderful time talking uh, about topics that are interesting uh, for each of us. But unfortunately, as I cannot see your faces, I will just use my imagination and imagine that you're there with me, smiling at me, supporting me, um, and collaborating me, with me. That is what I would like, really uh, like to ask you about, the collaboration itself. Uh, so you do have your chats there, uh, and sometimes during the presentation, I will ask for your ideas regarding this or that topics, uh, and I would appreciate if you can leave some ideas of yours, uh, so we can even collaborate now during our online conversation. So please uh, do that uh, if it is convenient, and Valeria will help us, to, uh, of course, 
And let us kick off. Uh, our topic is our regarding collaboration, as I said already. And while I was thinking on that, uh, I imagine um, and probably understood that, that we are SBAs are kind of balancers. We need to balance between the stakeholders from one hand and the team from another, from the other one. Um, I see that there is a little discrepancy in time while I am showing to myself and <laughs> how you see it. But anyway, let's proceed. Yeah, we need to kind of balance. We need to please our stakeholders. We need to make them happy uh, during our conversation, during our um, production time, during our releases, etc., etc., during our investigations as well. But from the other hand, we have our team there, and they like it's given by default that we need to please them as well. They need to be happy with our documentation, with our user stories, et cetera, et cetera, with uh, the way how we collaborate with them. But if from our uh, stakeholder side, we have all the uh, tools, all the um, techniques at our hand, we have racing matrix, we have communication plans, we have negotiation trainings on our side, expectation management, power interest grid, everything, everything, everything uh, that we train, we learn how to manage that. But when we are talking regarding the team, I'm I'm not sure about yourself. I'm just telling about myself. I didn't have a lot of trainings of how should I collaborate with team itself? What should I do when I meet the difficulties there? It's just, you know, given by default that all the BAs, every time uh, they just probably born with understanding how to deal with team. Uh, and that's why um, we are a kind of talented by, by default in this collaboration. But for BA, it's really hard to balance and we are afraid of stepping aside because we like feel that if we step aside, we make a mistake, we can fall in our BA role unless we have a solid background. If we have a solid background, we do not any, any way or any more afraid of falling. So let us try to gain some opinions or experience of mine, how I gained that solid background and how I still proceeding, gain it every day. So our agenda will be really simple today. I will share with you some sad experience of mine that I had in my BA practice while dealing with the team. Uh, we will talk about the ideal world where BA and developers live wonderful together. And also we'll talk regarding some tips and tricks from my expertise that probably will help you a little bit or at least you can understand that somebody uh, as a BA do mistakes sometime and feel irritated or sad due to this or that and afterwards um, of course question times for any question please um, don't ask very uh, difficult questions I'm still just a BA you know so let's probably start uh, we will start with the experience, said experience of mine. Um, once upon a time, I've got a new feature. I was a really young BA who just started the work, uh, and I understood that though the feature itself wasn't really, really uh, hard, still it required some uh, BA work from my side, but um uh, developers were busy they were uh, almost at the release time a difficult release everybody were on fire i couldn't get a word from developers because they just didn't have time to spare with me on something new they're busy with the current feature so what i did i just spoke with the stakeholders very wise very experienced and I gained the improvement, elaborated the stories. I had a ready uh, to refinement and I hope to the development backlog. Uh, and time of refinement came. And what has happened? How do you think? I prepared the stories, refined them with the team, and team declined them. 
they very, were very angry. They said very many unpleasant words because, as they said, the main concept of the entire new functionality was wrong. Oh my goodness, that was a really tough time for me. I didn't know what to do next. But that was the time when I learned that experience and collaboration between developers and BAs is vital. We need to collaborate. Regardless of business, regardless of time we have, we need to collaborate. But uh, how to establish that collaboration? Though we understand, and I understood at that point of time that collaboration is vital, how to establish that? I don't know about your world, but the world where I live in, it's always like this on the on the screen that you can see right now. It's always on fire. Developers' keys are very busy with the upcoming release. They are very busy with the current task. They cannot think of on anything future in future. They don't worry regarding the future. They think that BA should investigate everything. So BA just need probably somehow to to learn how to read thoughts of developers or how to read code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But now uh, let's talk and imagine the ideal world before we go on for the trips and tricks. Um, ideal world of the BA and ideal world of the developers. And here is where I'd like to ask for the collaboration from your side. I'll share your idea, my ideas regarding how the BA world should look like. Uh, what do we as BAs expect from developers? And if you have your ideas, please share them in chat so we could see them. Um, and let's kick off from this. Uh, so from my point of view, uh, I would expect that developers would be always ready to discuss things with me. They would be always at my hand, you know, to, uh, to explain me how it works right now, uh, what is the logic there, or how to understand the technical details. And actually, they would be ready uh, to discuss technical details with customer. I would really love that. I would not even like to dive in technical details. I don't know about you, but I don't like such strange new words that I do not understand what they mean. And I would love if developers could come to the technical meetings and discuss everything with the stakeholders and afterward just explain to me what that or this or that means. Well, oh yeah, we have one uh, idea from uh, out the outside. Developers should love BAs. Well, uh, that would be perfect. Unfortunately, Mr. Donut, the, it's not so um, for each developers, I would say. But let us proceed. I would expect also that developers can help me anytime when I need it. Doesn't matter whether they are busy with their current tasks or whether it is released tomorrow. My questions are urgent almost on the same level of urgency as their questions because if i do not prepare my part they won't have task for to do tomorrow well let us see um i don't know maybe you're living in another world maybe you have another uh, idea of what developers should do but uh meanwhile uh, let us uh, think what developers how they th see our um uh, our BA duties. What BA should do from the developer's side? You know, uh, I did investigate that. I've asked several developers and KAs, and what I've got from them is this, the following. BAs from developer's point of view should definitely speak technical language. Well, this is like a contrary to what I expect from developers, you know, or what I would like to avoid in future. Uh, meanwhile, if you have any ideas regarding the or what 
developers expect from BA. You're welcome again to type in the chat so we can discuss it together. Uh, but proceeding from what I have gained so far, um, developers expect that BA would hide developers from customer. The developers themselves would not even come to the meetings with stakeholders. I don't know about your experience, but in my experience, the majority of QA developers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, part of the team, they do not like uh, to speak to the to the stakeholders. They like to just do their job. They like coding, testing, sitting before their screen, talking to nobody, it, or maybe just to their colleagues, but not to the stakeholders. Uh, what else? Developers would like to know, uh, for would like our, us as BAs to write the stories from the uh, what point of view, not how. I don't know whether we faced such mistakes. I did in my life, in my experience. Oh yeah, we have another opinion here. BA should not talk, not talk follies. Well. That is very helpful, Mr. Joy. Um, unfortunately, I as be talk folly sometime, and I'm not afraid of that. <laughs> Let us proceed. Uh, developers would expect us to take all paperwork. Have you ever heard that developers do not like uh, writing anything except of code? If they need to write a user guide, they are always like, Oh no, I don't want to do that. Why B cannot write that? I will correct, but B, please try to write yourself. Well, and developers would like to have easy to follow documentation. That is something that I think we can work on as BAs. Um, it's not so difficult, I guess. Um, and now let's see uh, what tips and tricks I had in my experience to establish this good collaboration. This will be a UI example, example that easy for understanding. I think uh, many of you have faced something similar in your life and your BA experience, but let us see. Uh, once upon a time again, we had a very easy story, I'd say, rather ordinary one, uh, when we had to manage uh, and a, a, a kind of redesign the menu, uh, there would be just little, little, little changes. Um, everything that my team wanted from me as from BA side, they asked just list the items that should be mentioned there, um, the words itself, what should be there uh, in the menu, and we will do the rest of work. Well, that is easy enough. I did com complete that, that task, uh, complete that task rather well, and provided the list of, you know, items, boys, babies, et cetera, et cetera, this and that should be there. I like such, such user stories, you know, just mentioning what should be there. But later on, uh, while I was facing with an, and working with another team, and had the similar task there, uh, provided the similar uh, level of fidelity in my user story, uh, team came to me with the questions. Uh, what about the divider? Should be there a divider? Divider? Can you even see the divider there? Well, I did not see that. The other question was, what about shadow? What about overlay? Should be there overlay or shadow? Overlay. Do you see there an overlay? What is the overlay? Well, I did not know what that. Oh yeah, Mr. Joe, you're there. Expect, uh, I would say having fun with me here. Yeah? I did not know what the overlay is, but I had to learn. Well, next time when I provided this user story, I had to mention all that stuff. And my user stories or my BA task looks like find 10 differences between the state now and to be state. You know, I played that game all the time from that time on. But next time when in another team, I faced the same level of task, 
and I did provide all the overlays, all the shadows, everything that was at my hand to see on comparing is this and to be state. Uh, they asked me, why you mentioned this to me? Why are you doing this story so long? We are just mentioning everything that we know already. We know how the shadow should look like. We know that there should be an overlay, etc., etc. We do not want to read such long stories and be busy with that forever. Oh my goodness. Can you expect that? Oh yeah, thank you, Mr. Donut. You know, um, you know what I'm talking about. That's wonderful. Um, you know. I've learned something from that time on. When we are changing the teams, when we are changing the projects, when we are even probably inside one project moving from team to team, we need SBAs to know how to listen. Listen to our team, what they want, what this or that team wants to what they're interested about because it doesn't mean that uh, i mean uh, you can have similar tasks but you need to always think on who are the main consumers of ba documentation is this stakeholders is this end users is this your team well, sometimes it is stakeholders. Then you need to provide your documentation up to your stakeholders. When it is user guides, for example, and that should be understandable for each newcomer, then you should provide in such fidelity or easy to follow way um, as anybody could understand it, even a child. if. Uh, if child read this. But when you're elaborating the user stories or any other documentation for your team, listen what they would like to see there. Learn from your experience and from your collaboration. And it, it is not so hard to understand and adapt yourself to the questions that your team raise. From this point of view, I'd like to have one statement. BAs are the most agile people. I think that is a wonderful statement and we can kind of uh, be happy on that. You know, moving from project to project, uh, from team to team, we are as BAs facing with stakeholders, new stakeholders from our, one side, which we need to whom we need to adopt. And from other side to the team, and we are rather agile. We need to be agile and we are very agile people. Let us just bear that in mind that we are agile, we can adapt and it's not so hard for us to adapt to the situations. Let's just move on a little bit further. And again, I welcome you to, you know, help with any ideas of yours if you, understand what I'm talking about. Uh, I'll give you an example and probably you'll understand and can help me with your ideas there. Um, next, my tip and trick would be elicit. But what to elicit? Very easy. Elicit. Is it you that probably team irritated with? Or is it a process that the team is dissatisfied with? What I'm talking about? Um, I'll just give you one example of mine. Once uh, on one of the project, uh, I had a DM who was talking and saying uh, something like this. Um, he said, we really need to make stories less detailed because BAs are the bottleneck for our progress right, right now. Nice statement, isn't it? BAs are the bottleneck for the progress. But isn't it so? Or is it really so better to say? Oh, yeah, Mr. Joy, you think that BAs are the bottleneck. Oh, well, many, many does 
uh, have the same idea. Well, but you know, we elicited and asked SBAs, uh, is the detailed user story is a problem or the uncertain requirements from the stakeholders at the time when they give us the requirements? Oh yes, said DM. The stakeholders never managed to communicate their wishes on time. Well, then probably let's think on the process and maybe rearrange some meetings or do something so we could gain the requirements on time so that BAs would not be a bottleneck anymore. And we did. We did rearrange the meetings. We did rearrange the way of elicitation from uh, information requirements from the stakeholders. And we were not bottleneck anymore, you know? Oh yeah, great thought. Thank you, Mr. Donald for supporting me. Uh, and probably let us move on and uh, have some other, some other examples on that. So for example, again, Try to think and elicit when somebody is angry in your team, developers or QAs are angry, irritated, dissatisfied. Is it your skills that they dissatisfied with or some unclarity or time consuming or anything else? Um, another example of mine would be like this. Uh, I had... Uh, a way of writing user stories again in my junior BA age, let's say like that, uh, when one story or one acceptance criteria uh, refers to another one, you know, to, to simplify my BA world. And I did a story like this. Uh, result of AC1, result of AC2, and th that is it, that is it, uh, and so on and so on. And uh, my key is, oh yeah, thank you, Mr. Donut, you did the same. I'm not alone in my world. <laughs> um, Keys came to me very angry with really cross words saying, we do not understand a thing. What are you talking here about in this story? This refers to that and this refers to that and we cannot find ants here. Well, well they were irritated. But were they irritated with me as a person, as a BA, or with the story? You know, it's really hard to change personality, but, but it is easy to change a document. And I did change a document. For the own, I just uh, avoided these references as much as possible, and my reduced stories became better. And my QAs and developers did not need to uh, spend more time or much time on understanding what was there in the user story. Oh, yeah, I see and you'll see right now the uh, Mr. Joy supporting me in every sentence. Wonderful user story. Well, Mr. Joy, I've learned. I elicit and I understood that the problem is not in me, but in the way I did the story. Well, that helps because I did change the story and that helped. Let us proceed with the idea of elicitation. Uh, try to understand another like idea from me. Uh, are people in team, developers, QAs, whoever, are they irritated with you as a person, even if they are irritated, if they unhappy if they do not want to speak you with you uh, on a polite manner whatever whatever are they irritated with you as a as a person or they are probably fatigued of battles you know uh, here i have another example uh, i faced so many times when developers and team uh, irritated with the crs I don't know, maybe anybody of you likes CRs, uh, but I've never faced such um, teams and I myself personally do not like CRs. But the idea is here that even I as BA can 
uh, manage to uh, bring to team only one CR uh, among 10 that stakeholders wanted to do, though it's me who bring CR to the team, it's not stakeholders. I am like in the middle of collaboration between stakeholders and the team. And from team point of view, it could seem like uh, BA is a bad BA because CRs uh, are coming from the BA. Well, but is it a bad BA or is it just their team is tired because they do not like CRs? Here we can understand and distinguish what is what hurts hurts your way of doing work your personality or just something in the process in the documentation that we can easily change we can you may you know again be agile and change something for our team to to become happy let us proceed with another one um Probably my last tip and trick would be here to manage. And there are a lot of things that we can manage regard, uh, regarding the, our team and teammates. First of all, we can manage their time. We can manage our collaboration. Um, for example, going back to my very first example, when the team is always on fire. There is no time for me, uh, no time for them to spend on me or any future uh, features. Uh, what I learned to do, I just set up a meeting. Set up a very quick meeting with a developer, maybe just one developer beforehand. So the developer could be morally prepared that I need his or her time to work on on future and in not just half a day it's not unexpectedly you just set up beforehand and you know it worked it really worked it helped me to gain the required information it helped team to elaborate future stories pro properly without many faults in them Notifying the developers, okay, beforehand that they need to talk to the stakeholders. Again, that would help them to prepare themselves and notify that they would just need to see, to answer this or that. I'm not talking about very strong, very difficult things and a very perfect, you know, language. Notify beforehand, try help them to prepare to that meeting to reduce the stress. We all feel stress sometimes, and we can help each other to reduce that stress. Another way or another point that what we can manage is to uh, manage communication. Well, here, several ideas from me. Um, don't be afraid to ask. Once I had such a developer, you know, um, we collaborated really well, uh, but the main difficulty was there that uh, he was always showing me a piece of code, sharing the screen and saying like this, see here, it means that this goes there and after clicking on this, this goes, the, uh, the call goes there and that brings you to here and then to there and then to there. I did not understand a word from that code because I'm not a very technical person, you know, I'm just simple BA. <laughs> uh, and I asked him, could you imagine that I am just a child who doesn't understand the code? Can you explain to me in the very easy words what that means? Oh yeah, said he. He explained to me in a very easy word just for one minute and then Go back, went back to the code itself, and I need to, uh, had to ask him again and again, please still think that it, it is a child before you, what that means, what this means. But when we're asking, 
Well, sometimes it can irritate, but you know, um, it it depends on the way on the way we're asking. Uh, some other ideas from me uh, a little bit later will, will help to uh, understand how to deal with that irritation as well. Well, um, speak personally. This is something that um, I like to do, uh, especially when I had when I have some uh, tensions between me and developer or QA. You know. Uh, there are so many different personalities, I would say. Somebody likes to talk, somebody dislikes to talk. And when I feel that there is some misunderstanding or mm, some tension, I prefer to talk personally. I prefer to set up probably a small meeting to ask a, a simple question, but to talk personally in order for me to understand why and what and how to gain the collaboration, to establish the collaboration. And it helps a lot. It helps at least me to understand that there is this or that happening with that person. It helps person to understand that I am just a BA and I'm just a person who can collaborate, who can communicate, who can speak on different things, etc., etc. Um, and when I have really difficult times, you know, that was an idea uh, that I used before, but recently I heard that that was an idea of a very um, uh, well-known person um, saying that when you need to make a friend with a person who don't like you, who doesn't like you, just ask for help. If the person understands that you need help, he or she will probably overcome uh, the dislike of yours and become your helper. So uh, here is what I wanted to say to Mr. Joy. Mr. Joy, would you help me next time in preparing the presentation? Yeah, me help you next time will do much better. You see, it's already we. When you have a very mm, difficult relationships with, uh, with somebody, either this developer, okay, Try to think when and how this person can help you, in which way, and ask for that help. That would help you to overcome some barriers between you and the person. Um, appreciate. That goes to don't be afraid to ask and to all other points. When somebody helps you, when somebody uh, answers you when somebody accepts your meeting, etc., etc. Don't forget to appreciate. Don't forget to say thank you. That helps. That helped me with this and that. And don't af uh, afraid on. Don't uh, hide yourself from saying thank you before the entire team, and if it is possible before the stakeholders. It's really, it really helps when we hear pleasant words towards us. It helps anybody to when uh, they hear thank you from our side to them and especially among other people you know. Uh, my idea here is just to think of one next step you can do to overcome a barrier between you and a developer or a QA or to make your relationships better, smoother, etc., etc. One next step. Don't try to overcome a mountain, but try to just make a step. That is easy. Yeah, Mr. Donald, thanks. One step we can think about, and it will bring us at least to the experience of ours. We can at least see whether it works or we need to think about the next step or another step or learn from the wrong step that we had in our practice. Well, recollecting all that we heard, 
in this 30 minutes, listen, elicit and manage. And that doesn't go to the stakeholders, to the requirements. It goes to our team and our teammates. One thing that I always bear in my mind when I think on my team, when we have some difficult times, when we are irritated, doesn't matter with what we are irritated or with whom. I'm thinking that we have one mutual goal. We are not trying to overcome each other, to win the battle between one another. We are having mutual goal and that goal is our happy customer, the quality product and the successful team. Well, I would say that it's not so hard when you trying to concentrate not on the problem and strict words, but trying to look a little bit farther on our mutual goal. When we have some mutual goals, we can help each other to make next steps. We can help each other to forget about some difficulties and to concentrate on our future, to be proactive, to be happy, to make quality product and be successful. And yeah, thank you, Mr. Joy. It's not three goals. It's not uh, different goals, I would say. It's one goal. Because when our customer is happy, when we release quality product, we understand that our team is successful and we congratulate with each other with this. We can be happy ourselves, not just our customer, you know. Um, and that is it. That is it, what I wanted to share with you from my experience today. Uh, and now let's, uh, let's see whether you have uh, any questions. Oh yeah, thank you, Mr. Joy. You'd like to work with me on my next project. That helpful. Uh, even if Mr. Joy does not smile that much today, uh, you know, people who do not smile doesn't mean that they do not like you, that they do not want to collaborate with you further on. They just mean that probably there is something you still do not know about that person, but you still can collaborate re really wonderfully. Yeah, Valeria, your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elena, for this fascinating, inspiring talk. It was really interesting to hear your practical cases from your experience. And uh, we actually have a question um, maybe from the other part of uh, these barricades. Uh, so the question is, how do you deal with the difficult stakeholders during requirement solicitation? And how, you, um, how would you suggest to involve or encourage them to work on the requirements document? I guess stakeholders are, can be considered uh, customers and dev team as well. So please share your thoughts on this questions yeah thank you for the question first of all um i would say um uh, first of all and as i've already mentioned try to listen try to listen if they don't want to help you try to understand why what is the problem uh in many times uh, i understood that they just do not want how to, uh, do not know how to start do not know how what is the first step to start and the second problem was they do not uh, have time to start on helping with you collaboration with you collaborating with you um, so in any case you can try to help them try to uh, ask they're just small question, questions to help them to start communicating with you, help them to start collaborating with you. Even well, if you ask a very difficult question, it's hard to answer. But if you ask just small questions, you know, step by step, it always uh, brings a kind of relief to person. Because if it is just a small, easy question, and he or she answered well, 
they already feel better because they've answered something, then can try another one and another one. Uh, so when I have difficult stakeholders as well as difficult teammates, I first of all try to understand what is the difficulty itself, why it is so difficult for them to collaborate with me. Is it just me? Is it just probably the idea or the task is too big? And very often, the task is too big. I okay, hope that great. answers a little bit. So, so the general idea is never give up and try to exactly. find your way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. So let's move on to the next question. Uh, was there a situation when you used all the known techniques and tricks you just described, but didn't succeed in communication with the, with the dev team anyway? Um, if I say no, never, I would lie, of course. <laughs> um, you cannot predict or one cannot predict all the difficulties that can come to us. And, you know, each time we have a difficulty, we can be still happy because we will learn how to overcome it. Or, as again, many people say, uh, you, we will learn at least several ways which do not work in <laughs> overcoming this or that uh, difficulty. Uh, of course, each time when we face another a new team, a new project, we learn something new. And we're trying or starting to uh, overcome difficulties from the steps that we, we already had experienced in our life, that we learned and that worked. But when you uh, had made all the steps that you've done before and they do not work, then you try to elicit and understand what then I can do that I have never done before. And I do believe that there are always a lot of helpers because when, again, you're trying to not just to overcome, but ask and elicit what hurts, why it hurts, uh, what bring that barrier between you and team you will probably see a very simple idea that blocks you from, from establishing the, a very good communication. Okay, great, thanks. I also had a similar question regarding uh, the fact that you have, made, you have um, named so many tricks and tips and techniques. So I wanted to ask whether you have mastered uh, this art of communication with the dev team and you can handle any kind of issue. Um, but I, as I understand from your answer, there are still uh, some areas to grow into. Right? Of course. <laughs> if you think that you are already wise enough, then probably tomorrow or even today, you are at risk to fall. <laughs> so I, we always learn and it always helps us to understand that uh, we are not the experts. Um, we still need to learn and we learn each day in, in every step. Yeah, I agree with you. So thank you for sharing. Um, next question. Um, in your experience, how close to the ideal BA world uh, you also described in one of the slides uh, you got? So was there any time when it was just Definitely. Never. <laughs> Thank you. Never. I understood and I understand that my ideal world from the BA point of view, as well as the ideal world from the development point of view, never real. That is why probably it is ideal world. Um, but we are living in, in our world and we actually build our world ourselves. Um, and that is why it takes us time, it takes us efforts, uh, and takes our, you know, wisdom, knowledge, and collaboration between us within team and with stakeholders to build an ideal world, not just from base point of view, but from everybody's point of view. That's why we need to speak, 
we need to understand what are the expectations and try to uh, provide our expectations so we can, uh, can finally understand what we can build and where we need you know, to forget about ex our expectations and just to try to meet their expectations first and maybe then our expectations will be met. Okay, thank you very much. So let's move on to the next question we have from our audience. How would you deal with a weird dev teammate who requires very technical knowledge from your side, almost to be in architecture? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that, that is a very, uh, you know, uh, often question, I would say. Question that asked uh, very often. Uh, and I would say that almost in each team, there is such person. Uh, it could be an architect, it can be a key, it can be even a DM or Scrum Master, doesn't matter who and what role. Uh, but sometimes, uh, or just often, you face with such person. Uh, first of all, you know, uh, the trick from my side was that I've learned some very, uh, how to say, frequently used words that this person uses. Uh, and sometimes uh, when I collaborate with a person, I can use these words saying, oh, this, let's go back to my example. This layout should be like this and like that. Oh, another point, uh, I just recall oh, uh, one thing go, uh, which I faced with UI, um, collaboration with UI guys. I understood that there is a difference between margins and I forgot another word right <laughs> now, but never mind. mind. I, I've learned what is mar what margins are. Uh, and going back to the questions uh to the question i just try to use these words that i've learned and i learn them uh intentionally especially to you know like um to promote myself between this person or before this person to make him or her understand that first of all i'd like to learn but probably I'm not so um, talented person to learn everything at one time, but at least saying, well, this layout or this margin, uh, blah, 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 blah. Can you help me with what that? Can you please uh, remind me what the name of this is that? Oh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I would really appreciate if you can, can help me with this and that. Uh, you, you know, uh, of course, we cannot become, uh, you know, very, may, maybe you can, I cannot uh, become very talented, talented, talented in each and every uh, sphere, because we are SBAs, we jump from project to project, from area to area, from domain to domain, we need to learn uh, technical stuff each and every time. Uh, and Sometimes, of course, uh, some, something we, of course, we will not know, but we can learn at least something, start to learn in something and try to use these words, and then it would be easier to ask for help with understanding the other words. That would be my trick. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I think final question we got from our uh, audience recently. Uh, could you share your opinion on uh, how can one uh, grow the art of communication with the dev team so that they can understand your point? So that's basically what is your presentation is all about, but uh, maybe you can share some additional um, additional tips and tricks, additional sources on how uh, someone can grow to the uh, definite level of of this art of communication. The, the answer is very easy, just step by step. There is no other way. Even if we read all the books, even if we know all the theoretical part, we would still need to do our personal um, 
what did the other way of theoretical practical yeah practical steps only doing practical things for example trying to talk to uh, an architect personally and see whether it works or not try to uh, appreciate this development before the team and see whether it works or not this can work for one person and can be terrible for another one and you can just learn yourself so just try to make one next step and see whether it works or not great simple and perfect thank you for the for your answers and uh, thank you for your time for inspiring uh, inspiring presentation i hope our audience have uh, gathered some valuable tips and tricks for them and uh, again thank you uh, dear audience for your participation for your questions and um, we invite you to stay with us till the next activity and that's uh, some interesting uh, thing we prepared for you it is in a, a quiz you can undertake and check uh, your knowledge of the business analysis book of knowledge and uh, chapter nine of it so please stay with us till the quiz to uh, get inspired get uh, new knowledge for you and to of course to win a prize see you thank you so much thank, thank you, you see you bye